For reference, there's a wall that I've been working on and been working on. We've had a couple of days of cold weather that kind of stopped me. I did pour this footing here. That is the rest of the bedroom wall. But I have to do all the footings at once. So let me show you. We've got the next footing. You see the gate there. This is the main great room, I guess you'd call it nowadays. A big living room, combination living room, family room of the house. That footing is ready to pour. That's going to be the task today. As soon as I can get the, um, uh, get the 2 by 6s free, I'm going to uh, go ahead and pour this one, which is the wall between the great room and the bedroom bathroom. And just beyond the steps there is the last little section. We're going to pour that. And that, hopefully, I want to get all of these poured today. So what I'm going to do now is take down the fence and the gate, which of course uh, leaves everything open so I have to watch the dogs very carefully. These dogs all lived with, uh, the ones that we have now, all lived with us, um, with the exception of Cascade, lived with us in um, uh, Florida. So they're accustomed to getting out and walking around without having a fence and they come when they're called. Still, they're old dogs, so I'm going to keep an eye on them. That's going to be a bit of a challenge for a few days. So the, the, the goal that we're going to work on then, uh, in this video is to get these footings poured. And right here, where I'm going to remove the fence from here forward, I'm going to get the frame in so that I can block it off with some OSB, the, wood, the door frame and the, the doggy door frame, and bring that stone wall up at least uh, 30 inches. That'll keep everybody but Cascade from getting out. And Cascade, it doesn't matter. He's out all the time anyway. So let's get rolling. Ooh, look at Mr. Selfie here. Hey, hey! I started a vlog, and I'm not sure whether I'm, this is going in the vlog or not, but... Um, I've got a lot to do today, and I thought I'd give you a real quick little rundown on some of the stuff. So let me get behind the camera. Yeah, I've been collecting rock, and uh, the rock fall that I was collecting it from, if you, watched my, um, if you watched one of the earlier videos, that rock fall, the DOT is cleaning it up now, finally. Uh, so I got a lot of this. This is flagstone material here, wrapping around past my, um, past my antique radiator. Oh, by the way, everybody that looks at this, this is a 1913 American Radiator Rococo style radiator. I am looking for one or two more of these. Specifically, I'd like one that's got, you know, three or four uh, uh, veins for the bathroom and maybe a little shorter. But another one like this or even bigger, if you know the whereabouts of one, if you have one, hey, let me know because I'd love to have it. But anyway, got the flagstones here. The chickens are knocking my uh, um, pots down. This is one of those giant rocks that my friends and I went and got. It doesn't look like much when you look at it here, but if you don't think it's much, come on out here and try to pick it up. Another giant rock here. And let's go take a look at the, at the boulder field. Now someday this will be a patio, but right now it's a boulder field. Look at that. That is, I've estimated about seven tons of rock. I've got just tiny little walkways through here. Rockety rock, rock everywhere. And I just got back from town where I got more rock, I got firewood, and I got Portland. So I got a few bags of Portland right now. And I've got a friend coming to visit and help. We're going to do a cool video, he and I. Uh, and he's bringing some Portland, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, a word on firewood. You know, we try to do everything sustainably, one planet lifestyle. So my friend, the man that I worked for for five years, uh, he has a, nurse, a, a commercial nursery business. And these are old pallets that have broken um, or, or, or rotted or uh, a projects where he had scrap lumber. And he has a big old pile, a huge pile. And I go and get that as opposed to getting uh, wood. Um, right now because it's just he's gonna he's gonna burn it all eventually anyway he's gonna get the fire department over and pile, stack it all up and burn it so um, I take all I need from that right here is a pile of um, is a pile of scraps from what I'm doing right now and you can see the boulder field continues on now Back to what we're working on right now. There's a good shot, and I'm going to remember that shot, and I'm going to take one a little later. 
There's a shot of where we're working. Now, here, I've been working on this. This is the guest bathroom and guest bedroom. Then the house is actually, we're enclosing all the way around, enclosing where the travel trailer sits and coming around. And the changes we've done is we're going to make the outdoor kitchen uh, an indoor kitchen. So I've actually designed all the walls in that for that. So we're, we have a, a way open still to get the travel trailer out by pulling it backwards. We'll get the travel trailer out. Once I get the, um, the guest bathroom operational, the only thing we need the travel trailer for is the bathroom. So what we're working on is I have poured this footing here, um, and the ducks were really hard to get in on the pour. I've poured this footing here that runs over to the post and to and, um, beam here. I've run this footing along the, the barrier between the living room or great room I guess is a better way to call it and the master bathroom bedroom we're keeping the stairs because uh, that was one of the first things Debbie and I did together here so the stairs are going to stay so we're actually going to elevate the bedroom to this footing here and because these flagstones I know the sun's kind of bright but because these flagstones are so thick and so sturdy and the ground under them is sturdy I'm simply carrying the flagstones over and over and then we're going to build on top of the flagstones but I did have to pour footings here which was a, a big challenge now the video we're gonna do when my friend gets here is that uh, frame right there fits exactly my five-foot French door so that's where it's gonna go my job between now and when he gets here is going to be to get the stone up high enough that um, uh, th that that French door can be mounted in just fine now if you look over here just to the left you'll see a, a, a long little rock sitting there. Now that's a piece of my limestone. That's actually for the, um, for the dog door. We're gonna have a dog door, and I've got the casement for it right here. That is the casement for the dog door. And I contacted the manufacturer, and they said Cascade can get through that just fine, and the cats can get through it, so we're just gonna put the one dog door. That casement, I wanted to show you, um, that casement, there used to be a gate right on the uh, left side of that frame there. There used to be a gate. Now, I took that gate down. I saved the gate, but I had a 4x4 in the ground to attach a gate to. Well, I pulled that 4x4 up, and it was just a nasty old treated 4x4. Well, I was able to use um, three, of, three pieces of it, or most of it, I should say, to make that frame. The fourth piece was like two inches too short and I didn't like it so I had to use a different piece of wood on the bottom. But all I did was put that casement together. It's perfectly square. It's uh, 3 16 of an inch bigger all the way around than it needs to be so that the dog door will slide right in. I took my belt sander and sanded all the rough parts off the inside and what you see right there. And then I took my palm sander with some, I believe it was 100 grit. And smoothed it all out from there and I've stained it with linseed oil and we're gonna mount that and that will be more of uh, I think this vlog so for now let's get to work for those of you that have been following the masonry and are interested in how I'm doing the masonry and how I'm preparing for things I want to show you this right here now if you watched my video about how I built the stable uh, I, I took old feed bags put the old feed bags over the OSB and then mounted my old uh, roofing to that and the feed bags they overlapped this you start out here and then you overlap one here so water can't migrate back up and you just keep going up like that now I find feed bags breathe nicely just like house wrap does but what feed bags don't do is cost you money feed bags are cheap they come with the feed so this is an old um, um, wheat bag and what we're doing right here is this is a masonry wall that's fresh and new this is a new masonry wall here but it all has to tie into the uh, the existing building the first building that i i built what we used to call the dogs building and now it's just going to be kind of a kind of an office quote book room for us so to tie the two together i'm using my house wrap here then uh, i'm going to put 
the concrete anchors on both sides and then that's how it's going to tie in. So this whole wall, which is going to be a, a raw rock wall, this whole wall is going to be backed up with these feed beds. Now right here, this ends here because somewhere in here, and I'm not certain yet, but somewhere in here is where we're actually cutting this wall out from here for 14 feet that way to open up the dog's building into the entire great room area so that you can see the fireplace and and everything. So I'm not exactly sure how the archway is going to go. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually going to stop the masonry right even with the, the footing here. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that and on to some other stuff. Oh, by the way, my rocks are all ready here to be mounted. So I guess right now the other stuff is mixing up the mortar. If you followed me on my mortar mixes, this is going to be a very stiff mortar mix and I'm going to apply it wet. Now uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that. Hey guys, well I pretty much got, uh, pretty much got it covered up with trash, <laughs> construction debris. But uh, the wall is started, the doggy door is in place. I know you can't see it from a distance, but that's okay because you're going to see it up close in the next video that we're going to do. Uh, next week working up towards uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day called installing the French door. But I've done a real nice job here of, of uh, making a corner on both sides. Hopefully I can find the, the correct rocks to continue that up. Ready to move forward with it and that's about it for this video, uh, this vlog rather, on um, well we're going to call it Christmas Day 27, uh, 2016. So on Christmas Day, Merry Christmas to you all. And also, thank you for watching. Now, if you stay tuned, I'm also going to tag my Christmas, uh, my holiday greeting to you all at the end of this. But until the next video, Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas. See you later. Hi, folks. My name's Robert Earl. I'm out here in the construction chaos that for the last seven years has been our project and our lives, the Eco Ranch.us out here in the desert of far west Texas. I'd like to tell you a story and hopefully that's my holiday message to you and you can pass it along. You know, a few years back, some psychologists decided, let's do an experiment. So they took two young boys, about seven years old, took them and put them in a room. Now they were identical rooms, but each room was about two thirds of the way full, floor to ceiling, with horse manure put the boys in there and came back in and out. Well, they opened the first door and the one little boy was sitting there and he was in the corner as far away from everything as he could get and he was crying and they said, what's the matter? Why are you crying? So I'm in a room full of horse poop and it smells and I don't like it. Neither does Cascade. Down. So they said, oh boy, this isn't working too well. So they went and opened the second door to see what the second boy was doing. And the second boy, you could barely see him. He was up to his arms. He had horse poop everywhere. He was flinging it as far as he could get. They said, well, well, hey, what are you doing? And he came out with a big grin. And he's, well, I'll tell you what, with all this horse poop in here, there's got to be a pony somewhere and I'm going to find it. Now, you think about that, that's your, that can be your approach to life. You can either be sitting there crying about all the horse poop that the world throws at you, or you can be out in it digging for that pony. And it doesn't matter whether you find the pony or not. It's the act of digging that keeps you optimistic, keeps you happy. I remembered that story since I heard it about 50 years ago. And each and every morning for the last well, as long as I can remember, I've gotten up in the morning excited, getting ready to get out there in right in the middle of that horse poop and look for my pony. Now, I haven't found him yet. Not haven't been as lucky as some people. But it's not the finding. It's the act of looking that makes you a better person and a happier person. And what better gift can you give the world than you as a happy person? optimistic person and what better gift can you give yourself than that gift of optimism to be able to get up each and every day no matter how much horse poop is out there you can get out in it wade through it and look for that pony 
So that's my wish to, for all of you on this holiday season and through 2017. There's a lot coming, and I don't mean politically, but there's a lot coming. We have, we have the climate to worry about. We have a lot of different things that are going to affect our, our very way of life and our faith in life. So let's get out there and not cry on the side of the road, but get out there and dig for that pony. So tomorrow morning, join me as we dig for that pony. But until then, Debbie and I out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas would like to wish each and every one of you a very heartfelt, happy holiday season and have a wonderful 2017.